Apple just released iOS 17 to the public and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at everything new in iOS 17. If you guys haven't already done so, make sure to hit that subscribe button to see more videos like this and without further ado, let's get started. One of the biggest new features in iOS 17 is name drop, the ability to drop your contact information via airdrop to the next iPhone. You can see right here, the animation looks very fluid and very nice, and it simply just transfers your contact information from one phone to another. So sharing contacts has never been easier before. With iOS 17, Apple is introducing contact posters to your phone. So whenever you set up your contact poster, you can just set up with any images and you can customize the text as well. And once you have your contact poster set up, so next time you give a call to someone else, they're going to see this image pop up on their display and that's how they're going to answer their calls and that's how they're going to see you so you don't have to actually have custom images for anyone anymore if they're on ios 17 and they have their own contact photos you'll actually see their contact poster come up when they give you a call and once you have your contact poster set up whenever you give a call to someone else they'll see your contact poster next we have some changes to siri you no longer have to say hey siri in order to invoke siri no more you can just say siri and it's going to pop up and you can just start your commands right away so you no longer have to say hey siri in ios iOS 17. Now in iOS 17 with Siri you can do back to back requests so whenever you invoke Siri you can ask it a command and when it's completed you can ask it another command so you can actually do back to back requests. Um, so it doesn't allow you to do multiple requests in one request it only allows you to do back to back which means you can send a request and then once that's completed you can send another request instead of having to say hey Siri again or Siri again it just works pretty fluidly. Siri again is not all that smart so hopefully in iOS 18 Siri gets a much needed update because it's not the best voice assistant out there but those are the some of the changes in Siri and iOS 17. The maps application in iOS 17 is finally getting offline maps which means you can download maps for offline use whenever you're traveling to a new destination. Once you select the download option it's going to give you this grid layout where you can actually select the amount of maps that you want to download so you can actually get the coverage that you need so you don't have to download too much or download too little you can just cover the area that you want to cover and you can go ahead and download that maps right onto your iphone the best thing about these offline maps is that you get all the information that you would have when you're connected to the internet but you can now have all this information in an offline downloaded map the only information that you're not going to be getting is going to be real-time traffic because you would actually have to be connected to the internet to see that information in the photos application visual lookup is getting a major upgrade before it was limited to just pets and leaves but now you can actually find out different icons like laundry care automobile care as well as food recipes if you have an image of a food it'll give you the recipe for that food and if you have some clothing tags you can see what those little laundry icons mean and if you have like a car dash issue and you take a picture of that dash icon it would actually let you know what those auto symbols mean right within the photos application also in ios 17 on the photos application before we were limited to just people in the people section but now you can actually have pet recognition in the photos app on ios 17. so if you're a pet owner like me then you can actually find all all of your pet images just under your pet name it works really nicely and i'm glad they actually included this in ios 17. also in the maps application we're finally getting ev charging built right into the app so if you own an electric vehicle and you're looking for the nearest charging point you can do that within apple maps and it does not only give you the charging points it also gives you some more information of course you're gonna get the distance but you can also see how many charges are available the pricing for it as well as the speed of charging and all of this information is in real time so if you're driving on route right now and you looking for the nearest charger it will let you know what chargers are available in real time the spotlight search in ios 17 is getting a lot smarter so if you go into spotlight search and you're looking for anything you can pretty much find anything right within the spotlight search so for example if i search this artist's name it's going to give me everything that's related to it on my device from my music the pictures images i can also do google searches right within the spotlight search so spotlight search is definitely getting a bump up from last year also within the spotlight search you can now configure system toggles right within the spotlight search so if i pull down the spotlight search and i want to turn on my bluetooth i can just type in bluetooth and it's going to give me the toggle to toggle bluetooth right within the spotlight search this also works with other controls like airplane mode wi-fi and so on so you can actually do a lot more in spotlight search than ever before apple music got some really nice updates in ios 17 so if you go into the music player and now you go into the now playing screen you're gonna get a full screen animated artwork for the albums that are supporting this it looks a lot cleaner than having just a square cover art it gives more life to the music and it just looks a lot better for the albums and singles that don't support animated artwork you're still gonna get the regular square artwork but there's a lot of music being added to apple music and all the new ones are usually getting animated artwork and it's just just looks amazing in iOS 17. Apple Music is finally getting crossfade back on 
iOS. Before this was available on iTunes on the desktop, but it was never available on the iPhone, but it's finally available in iPhones on iOS 17. You would have to turn this on so you can go into settings, music, and under the crossfade section, you want to just make sure that's turned on. And you can also customize the time seconds that you would want for the crossfade to apply. So right now I have it at four seconds. So the four seconds at the ending of a song, it's going to transition into the next song. It's just going to have this nice little fade sound effect. And it just feels like the music is continuously playing without really stopping. I'd like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, iTool Lab. Apple just announced the latest iPhone and if you're looking for a way to transfer your WhatsApp, iTool Lab has got you covered with its all new WhatsApp transfer tool, What's Go. It's the best all-in-one transfer tool for your WhatsApp data. With What's Go, you can transfer your WhatsApp data easily from Android to iPhone, Android to Android, iPhone to Android, as well as iPhone to iPhone. Your contacts, messages, call history, images, videos, stickers, and more are easily transferred to your next phone. There's no need to factory reset your iPhone. What's Go is capable of transferring large files without long waits or getting stuck. What's Go is available on both PC and Mac, and all you have to do is connect your two phones and click transfer, and you're good to go. It's as easy as that. The best part is iTool Lab has a big sale right now and you can get up to 40% off. Check out the links in the description below for links and coupon codes. And now let's get back to the video. Before we had the option on Apple Watch to ping our iPhones, but now in iOS 17, you can ping your Apple Watch right from your iPhone. This is gonna be available in the control center, so it is a control center toggle. So you'd have to actually have this enabled, it's not gonna be there by default. And once you click on the icon, it will actually start pinging your Apple Watch. If you wanna turn this on, you can just go into settings, control center, and just make sure that the icon is toggled on and available in your control center. And now you can ping your Apple Watch in iOS 17. We had widgets on iOS before, but now in iOS 17, Apple is introducing interactive widgets. So now if you have a widget on your home screen, you can easily interact with the widgets instead of having to open up the full application. This works really well with the music widget on your home screen, but what I like the most is the home widgets that are now finally available in iOS 17. So you can actually control your HomeKit devices right from these widgets. Most of the Apple widgets are now interactive and third-party applications will be updating it as soon as they can because iOS 17 is finally out. And I can't wait to see what those other applications do with interactive widgets. In Safari on iOS 17, your private browsing is now locked. So if you go into your private browsing, you'd have to unlock it with Face ID before you can enter your private browser. So it's just adding a little extra security for your private browsing now in iOS 17. The camera app on iOS 17 does not get any major updates, but one of the new features added into the camera is a leveler. So if you're taking a video or even pictures and you wanna have the perfect leveled shot, you can now see an on-screen leveler pop up to make sure that your shots or pictures are now leveled. The phone user interface on iOS 17 gets a slight redesign, so all the icons that you'd usually see in the middle are now pushed towards the bottom of the screen so you can easily access these buttons with just one hand. iOS had screen time before, but now in iOS 17, Apple is pushing it a little bit further and now they're including screen distance, which pretty much gives you a notification whenever you're too close to your iPhone. This also works on the iPad, so if you're too close to your display, it's automatically gonna give you a pop-up saying that you're too close to your device and you have to push your device further back. And this is actually going to be good for reducing eye strains and stuff like that. And especially for kids who are always on their iPad for a little bit too long or sometimes they're just having it too close to their face. The AirPods user interface in iOS 17 gets a slight update. So now if you're in dark mode and you have your AirPods open, the pop-up card is going to be in dark mode instead of it being bright like it was before. So if you do have your device in dark mode, it will be black. But if you have that turned off, then that pop-up will be in white. Autofill verification codes hands down has been one of the best features in iOS and it's getting even better in iOS 17. Previously, we were limited to just a text message verification codes, but now in iOS 17, it also supports email. So if you're getting a verification code on your email, it'll also pull that directly from your email and you can use that for autofill as well now. On top of that, we also get clean up verification codes automatically. So let's say you get a text message for a verification code and you already used it. Now in iOS 17, it's automatically gonna remove that messages. So your messages and your mail applications are not too cluttered with all these verification codes. In iOS 17, alongside with tvOS 17, if you have a Siri remote paired to your Apple TV, you can now locate your remote directly from your iPhone. All you have to do is pull down the control center and hit the remote icon and you can see which remote is connected to which TV. I currently have the Siri remote connected to my living room TV and you can see right beside it, there's gonna be a find icon. And if I hit on that, it's gonna bring my find my screen and from here I can locate where the Siri remote is. You still can't play a sound to find your Siri remote because there is no built-in speaker into the Siri remote but nonetheless 
this is better than nothing. In iOS 16, Apple introduced custom lock screens and in iOS 17, Apple's bringing even more new wallpapers. My personal favorite wallpapers were the astronomy wallpapers before it was limited to just the earth and the moon, but now in iOS 17, you get every single planet and it just looks amazing in this high resolution wallpaper. Of course, you're gonna be getting some other new wallpapers as well, like kaleidoscope and the new unity wallpapers, but personally, I have to say the astronomy wallpaper has been my favorite and I'm glad to see a major update in the astronomy wallpapers in iOS 17. And finally, Apple is introducing standby mode to the iPhones in iOS 17 and it turns your iPhone into a smart display whenever it's hooked up to a MagSafe or wireless charger and it's in its horizontal position. So if you're charging your phone at night on a stand like a MagSafe stand, you can have all these information pop up on the side on your nightstand. Especially if you have an iPhone 14 Pro or higher, this is going to be an always on display whenever it's charging and it also has that red tone like the Apple Watch Ultra if you have the iPhone 14 Pro or an always on display iPhone. And that wraps it up for this video. If you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.